by the power of Grayskull. I... First symptom, wrestling. No wonder House thinks he has supernatural powers since he sent that morgue patient straight to hell. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 5, Episode 22, House Divided. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes. This is Episode 112. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Aren't you curious about why I'm here? It's insomnia. Need some coffee? Deaf 14 year old started hearing imaginary explosions. Exploding head syndrome. Cool. Patient went deaf at age four. Complication of meningitis. Mom's signatures on everything. The dad die? He was a sperm donor. Medical records couldn't be cleaner. Let's put him in the seizure lab. See if his head blows up all over again. I need a script for sleeping pills. Nighty night. Drugs with no lecture? He wants you out. Just when I thought this series would get boring, it comes back to life, and so did Amber. And that's all while our deaf patient is hearing imaginary explosions. Could it get more unique? So what do we know so far? The boy went deaf at four because of meningitis, he's 14, and his dad was a sperm donor with a clean medical history. These explosions he's experiencing sound like exploding head syndrome, but not exactly. So why is that? Well, exploding head syndrome is what's called a parasomnia, which means that it happens in the gray area between wakefulness and sleep. That causes people to jump out of their bed because they suddenly heard bullets being fired, doors banging, explosions, or thunder. This could be pretty traumatic as especially if you're at home alone and you hear a door slamming shut then it makes you think someone else is there but then you go to check and tumbleweed silence until you try to go back to sleep again and your brain forces you to watch Mission Impossible with no Tom Cruise a second time. Our patient wasn't exactly counting sheep though as he was in the middle of a high stakes wrestling match so this must be something other than exploding head syndrome. What if his inner ear is actually regenerating itself because of something happening in his body? Maybe some kind of undifferentiated cancer stem cells have landed in his ear and started to heal it somehow as they eat away the rest of his body. Either way, Let's get more clues. Chase's best man doesn't get here till the day of the wedding, so I asked Wilson to throw his bachelor party. The two things I do well, bachelor parties, rank, towards the top. No sign of seizure, temporal lobe activity is still clean. Doctors, he can't see, one of his eyes. So exploding head syndrome plus vision loss. Subclavian steel syndrome. We should do an angio. Check Knock yourselves out. How high is K2? I don't know. Me neither. I read a book about it years ago. 28,251 feet. An all access pass to my own brain. Go play the kids some music. He says he feels the vibrations in his abdomen, but not his hands. It's a new symptom, neuropathy. Somehow the directors have managed to make House look helpless here, like he's being led by Amber, even though the ideas Amber is feeding him are coming from himself. Genius. Eventually he's gonna have to explain how he's figured all this stuff out to his team though, and I'm not sure if he even knows that himself. Also, admitting the truth of a f poltergeist has a tendency to either get people incarcerated or start a religion and something tells me house isn't so interested in the latter either way we have a new clue along with his blindness neuropathy we know his vibration sensors aren't working in his hands we would also want to see where else his nerves aren't on top form as that can give clues as to what's causing it in the real world this numbness is most likely due to diabetes thyroid issues excessive alcohol or medications like chemotherapy or tb medication called isoniazid, vitamin B12 deficiency or autoimmune conditions could do it as well. We're looking for spicy here though, not common, so what else could it be? It is making a brain tumor more likely. A lot of this patient's symptoms seem to be abnormalities in sensory processing. Maybe he had a tumor in both sides of his brain that took out his hearing like in neurofibromatosis type two, then they have slowly grown outwards and are affecting the sensory processing of his vision and hands as well, leading to his other symptoms. Oh, that would actually work quite well and is definitely treatable. Neurofibromatosis type two has to be my first diagnostic guess. Question for you smart people, why do you think this patient is refusing to have a cochlear implant to restore his hearing? Answers down below. How'd you know about the neuropathy? Think wrestling record. The patient was pinned in his last three matches. Could be increased ICP from a brain tumor. What if it was caused by NF2 cancer instead of his childhood meningitis? MRI his head. Imaging shows slightly elevated ICP, but no masses on or around the nerves. The wall of the fourth ventricle change. It isn't bowed in the older scan. You'd need to do a brain biopsy to confirm.
Biopsy shows nerve inflammation consistent with increased intracranial pressure. Why are you closing? You're supposed to put in a cochlear implant. Let's get an implant trying here. This thing just trying to relax. You're not mad. You wanted your son to hear. You just didn't have the guts to make him get the implant. Why did you do this? My patient is opting into a handicap. Okay, but I'm still putting Foreman in charge of the case. Doing a brain biopsy to diagnose raised intracranial pressure is like figuring out you burned your food from a fire brigade siren. Probably a bit too late. We want to smell the smoke first, and our equivalent is by doing a lumbar puncture. We can test the pressure inside the brain and spinal cord by putting a large circular tube called a manometer onto a needle that goes into into the space with the spinal fluid. We then measure how high this hopefully clear fluid goes up into the manometer. That's how we figure out the pressure is too high. Not by sticking a needle in his brain to collect a small souvenir that leaves the man thinking that gelatine is a device for cutting the heads off jelly babies. Either way, I'm sure the patient will be thrilled that with his cochlear implant, he can now hear all of House's creative insults. But first though, it seems like there's overwhelming noise he needs to get through. I have to say though, this is a part of the episode that isn't quite accurate because when the cochlear implant is first inserted, then it isn't active. At the time of them filming this house episode, this activation typically happened at around three to six weeks after the surgery when the incisions are fully healed. Now there is a bit of a shift to some places doing it early, but that's still the exception rather than the rule. But how does a cochlear implant actually work to give someone their hearing back? It's very interested and to be honest, one of the things that makes me love what science can do. The issue in patients with sensory neural hearing loss is usually that there is damage to the cells inside the inner ear, the cochlea. These cells usually transmit the vibrations of sound to the auditory nerve as an electric current so that our brain can comprehend what we're hearing. A cochlear implant helps a deaf person to bypass those damaged cells. You have a processor microphone which sits just behind the ear that takes the incoming sound and converts it to a digital sound. This then goes to a transmitter that sends the signal from outside the skull to a receiver inside the skull. That receiver is connected to an electrode that's threaded into the semicircular canals of the cochlea to match and send the signals directly to the auditory nerve bypassing the cochlear hair cells. And there you have it, a person can hear again. After that procedure, a person can have tinnitus, which comes as ringing or roaring sounds in the ear, but that does usually settle as the ear heals. Some people also get popping or crackling sensations. While patient experience definitely seems more intense than that though, so let's get more clues. Why did you do it? Why did I give a human being the power of hearing? Candy? I'm pretty sure Wilson's stripper's name was something sweet. His girlfriend was sick a few months ago. Maybe her flu was really Epstein-Barr. Leads to meningitis, leads to increased intracranial pressure. Start him all right before I'm for Epstein-Barr. Keep making decisions like that. It bolsters the illusion that you're in charge. <sighs> Seth! Yes? I think he just wet the bed. Remember in med school when Donovan gave grand rounds, there was that guy who was peeing leaders. Night, recumbent body position, changes in BP. It's just hard. We're on a 12 BDKG watching for four hours. I'm all for people going to work if they feel well enough, but when your diagnostic suggestions come from a sixth sense, then surely even House should be questioning his sanity. Unless, of course, he's enjoying having direct access to his subconscious, in which case, someone else needs to stop him. This does beg the question, could someone with psychosis also be a doctor in the real world? There was a really interesting self-published case report of this back in 2018 by a doctor named Catherine Fox. She was a GP or family medicine trainee as they call it in the US. And despite having delusions, seeing herself on the walls of train stations and seeing people with name badges, Moses and Jesus trying to arrest her in a train station, her psychiatrist thought that she simply had depression. It wasn't until she took an overdose and ended up in A&E that she managed to get onto a psychiatric ward for the help that she needed. The team realized she had psychosis after she had thoughts that she had cured all diseases, including cancer and HIV. After she tried to leave the ward, she was sectioned, being kept there against her will, and started on a medication called Resperidone, which allowed the delusions to fade away. After being stabilized, she managed to return to her practice. Another doctor with psychosis named Mark Vonnegut is an active pediatrician who was diagnosed with schizophrenia, which has now been amended to bipolar disorder. He has had three psychotic breaks and is back in active practice. His patients either don't know or don't care that he has a mental illness 
illness. They're more focused on their symptoms and problems that the Dr. Vonnegut can help them with. Working in the same community for the last 35 years, he feels he has proven his worth. So yes, doctors who've had psychosis can actively practice, but not while they're unwell. Question for you smart people, would you mind being treated by a doctor you know has had severe mental health issues like psychosis? Answers down below. Hallucinations aside, we do have a new clue, excessive urination. Taking into account Amber's clues here where she did mention Wilson's stripper name being something sweet, candy, was she giving House a clue there? diabetes that could also cause excessive urination as well but the classic mellitus form would show up quite easily with a blood sugar that they definitely would have tested him for already what if it isn't that form of diabetes though i have a theory it's diabetes insipidus the patient thought he was nervous about his wrestling match but he was just peeing excessively because there was a tumor in his head that was damaging the hypothalamus or pituitary gland this damage meant that a hormone called ADH, short for antidiuretic hormone, couldn't be released, which means the body no longer retains water. That can cause his excessive urination and reduce the electrolyte levels of sodium, which could lead to brain swelling, causing the raised intracranial pressure. What about the sounds and hearing though? Those electrolyte abnormalities or direct invasion of a tumor could have affected the pathway that perceives sound, causing the loud banging noises and maybe even the deafness, although that's likely something else. If it is coming from the brain, then treatment would be to give him desmopressin, which is synthetic ADH that would allow his body to retain water again and maintain its electrolyte balance. That would fit too well, especially with the candy and diabetes insipidus, amber link, and the team haven't even mentioned it yet, so it has to be my second diagnostic guess. House's heart examinations, I'm sure, are just a sideline. Let's get more clues. We need to talk about the bachelor party. Cameron is not gonna be happy about this party. I need you to kidnap me. Spoken like a true Aussie. It's EKG, normal sinus, normal intervals, heart's fine. His heart's not fine. You need to stress him, put the patient on a treadmill. Patient just had brain surgery. A stress test could cause a brain bleed and kill him. Run the fiber panel. How do we get him into the stress lab without Foreman sign off? We could kill Foreman, or asthma meds, force the heart to beat faster. He ripped out his implant. Look at that, arrhythmia. It's pulmonary embolism. Should do a VQ scan, see if his lungs are clear. Go! By the power of Grayskull, I... First symptom, wrestling. Then, under the lights of the seizure lab. Heat. Foreman, it's got Uthoff phenomenon. It means it's MS. Turn him on double dose interferon. Uthoff phenomenon? From setting a diseased patient on fire? No wonder House thinks he has supernatural powers since he sent that morgue patient straight to hell. Surely it's got to be tough celebrating that victory considering what it took to get it. Either way, I have to admit I've never even heard of Uthdorf phenomenon, so I had to look this one up. It describes a temporary worsening of symptoms related to a demyelinating disorder like MS when the patient with it is overheated. That can be in hot weather while exercising or in a hot tub. Before MRI scans, this was actually how MS was diagnosed. It was called the hot bath test. Patients were put in and if they went blind or in that direction, then they had MS. This could be because heat can slow down the conduction of nerve cells, which means more loss of signals due to the leaky nerves. If the patient does have MS though, then there's no way they can cure it and they can just treat the symptoms. What if he had another cause of demyelinating disease that led to his symptoms though? I say that as well because MS doesn't really fit the whole peeing himself thing either. It would usually cause a spastic bladder, if anything, that would need a catheter to get the pee out. So he could still have demyelination related to a virus called HTLV-1. They said his girlfriend was unwell with a cold sore a few weeks back, so that would explain the patient's symptoms. It can actually cause deafness as well. With steroids, he could even make a full recovery, so HTLV-associated demyelination has to be my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. According to our records, your work permit has expired. If you could come with us. I'm sure it's a mistake. I'll call you as soon as I know what's going on. Allow me to welcome you to the best night of your life. Ah, uh, yes, these girls are all working their way through law school. Don't test them. This is my apartment. You can't do this. James. Caramel. Hey. How's your wife? We got divorced. How about we go have a drink? You should be out there. I can't like it in here. 
Is that Strowman? <gasps> Chase went into anaphylactic shock. One of the residents had an EpiPen, so he's fine, but we're taking him to the hospital to be safe. I knew about her body butter, I knew about his strawberry allergy. I tried to kill Chase. That kid we saved, he's dying. It's not MS. Uh, large lymphs could- Are any of you sober? Sun smoke? Some medical stains on his teeth. He says he used to chew tobacco to cut weight for wrestling. Tao was right. It's sarcoidosis. Usually responds to corticosteroids and methotrexate. I'll start the meds. I haven't slept through the night since Cutner killed himself. Sleep well? It looks like House is gonna have to work harder than a Xanax and a few shots of his new second wheel. I can't believe Foreman got there with sarcoidosis just from tar staining. The chewing tobacco suppresses his immune system, keeping the sarcoidosis at bay, and then as he stopped, it came back with a vengeance. Tobacco and smoking does suppress the immune system in a way, but one that would make you more susceptible to infection rather than just fighting autoimmune disease. It actually contains a bunch of pro-inflammatory chemicals, which can even worsen some autoimmune conditions like MS, rheumatoid arthritis, or lupus, and can even trigger them. It can be protective though in sarcoidosis and ulcerative colitis. So very impressive from the writers. These diagnoses are getting harder and harder as the series goes on. I haven't hit one in a while. So 8.2 out of 10 entertainment, 7.8 out of 10 accuracy, 8.1 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where an environmental activist chains himself to a thorny situation here.